ready for science. A couple weeks ago, it became apparent that my initial strategy for screening my transformed diatoms for possession of GFP wasn't going to work. It turns out that we didn't have filters on two different systems to check for GFP expression. Because my initial idea for screening diatoms with a microscope wasn't going to work, I needed another idea. I decided that I wanted to approach the situation by designing gene-specific primers to amplify GFP. Because I've had a lot of experience cloning DNA with bacteria, I thought, well, I screen bacteria, right? and I get really good results, and that's easy. So why can't I do the same thing with diatoms? We screen cloned bacteria for the presence of the desired DNA through a colony screen. A colony screen is a PCR reaction specialized to take DNA from cells and use that to be amplified. So we can take a small sample of cells, say a single colony growing on an agar plate, and add it to a PCR reaction. By increasing the initial denaturing stage of the PCR reaction, which is usually 94 degrees Celsius, we can first denature the entire cell, and this will release the cell's DNA. After some severe labor on the computer, I successfully designed the primers, ordered them, and was ready to go. I started with the primary screening of six different cultures. So these were six different lines of diatom cells, and I didn't know whether they had GFP or not. Three of these cultures were diatoms growing on agar plates, and those actually, well, they worked. That is, my gene-specific primers were able to amplify GFP out of the diatom cells. So, with these really encouraging results, I went ahead and I screened 20 different diatom cultures to see whether they had GFP. The first step is to add diatom media into individual Eppendorf tubes. There is one Eppendorf tube for each cell line. Now it's time to pellet the cells using a tabletop centrifuge. After the cells are pelleted, it's time to aspirate the supernatant from the vials, which is essentially vacuuming the water off. While the cells are spinning down, I'm setting up a PCR reaction. Because the PCR reactions are all the same, I'll make all of the reaction material in one vial and then distribute the PCR material into the individual PCR tubes. These PCR tubes are now ready for their cell samples. Now it's just a matter of adding the right cell sample to the right PCR tube. The accessory pigment, Fucoxanthin, gives diatoms this nice brownish color. Here we can see the diatom sample at the top of the tube and the PCR reaction at the bottom of the tube. Then we spin down the PCR samples to make sure everything is in the bottom of the tube. A quick spin, then off to the PCR machine. It's a matter of loading the samples, selecting the cycle, and hitting go. While the PCR reaction is running, I'm going to autoclave some seawater for my larger cultures. This is natural seawater that's been filtered. Each flask gets a piece of paper towel, and finally capped with a piece of aluminum foil. Autoclaving the seawater will sterilize it, allowing me to make cultures from them later. Finally, while my PCR reaction is finishing up, I'll set my gel so it's ready to be run once the PCR reaction is finished. But yeah, so after all of that work, I didn't get any results. How frustrating. It worked the first time, but it didn't work the second time when I did more work. Stupid diatoms. I knew that there were enough cells going to each of the samples, so I didn't think that the DNA um, sample was really a problem. So what did I do differently this time? Well. To be honest, the first time I did the screening, I didn't get any results from liquid cultures. I only got results from diatoms that were growing in agar plates. And, well, diatoms grow in salt water, so maybe some of the salt in the diatom cells was messing up the PCR reaction. Because PCR reactions have very specific boundaries for um, you know, certain chemical conditions, one of them being salt. So my professor recommended a few ideas of how to get around this problem, and I tried them. Um, 
but they didn't work. I was going to try some DNA extractions, but well, um, that'd be really uh, long and painful to do for a lot of samples because I needed a quick and easy way to screen a lot of different diatom cell lines to see whether they had GFP. Not wanting my initial um, good result to go to waste, I thought, you know what, if I can get GFP to be amplified out of diatom cells from diatoms growing on agar plates, then I can do it from diatoms growing in liquid culture. What I ended up doing was designing a protocol to essentially eliminate all the salt water from the diatom cells growing in their liquid media. The protocol I designed was essentially a series of pelleting the cells, aspirating the supernatant, and then washing the cells with the distilled water, and then pelleting again, and then aspirating again, and then washing again. After doing this PAW protocol, or pelleting, aspirating, and washing, I got some results. Now, this shell is pretty ugly, but I was extremely excited. Because any PCR band showing up on a gel from something that wasn't working before, that's, that's great news. So since this rather ugly but positive gel, um, I went ahead and I screened more cultures, and it looks like they all have GFP, which is just fantastic news, and I'm very, very excited. This now means I can kind of enter the third phase of my project, which is kind of getting near the um, stage where I'm going to get results. Results that will support my thesis and get me my degree. Yes! I have plenty of other work to do in the lab, such as optimizing the PAW protocol I developed to make it um, as efficient as possible. Damn, that lab.